Welcome, I'm John Glanville and this is video 50, part one in my Calmness in Mind series where we explore common sense solutions for your karma life. Now across my following few videos, I will focus on making the technique of ERP, exposure and response prevention, more understandable, practical and demonstrable. This first video will detail the basics of ERP, explaining its significance as the primary technique for addressing anxiety disorders. And if you're not embracing it, and if you're not applying it daily, then honestly, you haven't even begun your true journey of recovery yet. The effective use of ERP will not only help you to disregard your brain's intrusive thoughts, but also enable you to accept the body's automatic fearful reactions to those unrequested stories, while you simultaneously and consciously overwrite your unconscious brain's old belief system stories with new optimistic and loving narratives of yourself and how you would like to connect with life. However, it's my experience from over two decades of working with very complex anxiety that when you mention ERP, half of those with anxiety say, oh, I already tried ERP and it didn't work. And the other half say, oh no, ERP is just too scary for me to try. Therefore, neither group are applying this robust change process seriously or effectively. Which I think is a shame, because ERP is a powerful process. And by gradually exposing yourself to the things that make you anxious, and learning to resist the urge to perform compulsive behaviours, you learn how to tolerate uncertainty and you become more comfortable with feeling out of control. And ERP will help you to achieve rapid progress and a very lasting change. Yes, it's awkward to do initially. And yes, it will force you to take more responsibility for your life. However, it's no less scary than living with anxiety and believing that there is no escape from it. So if you are not currently embracing this proven strategy, it means you were taught ERP incorrectly or you don't understand it well enough to apply it effectively. Or perhaps you receive some secondary gain by unconsciously sabotaging your recovery, such as receiving financial or housing benefits uh, through your existing incapacitation. I also think there are two further misunderstood elements of ERP. And that is, as the person does the exposure work and their fears begin to normalize, very often the real challenges in that person's life come to the fore, like having to leave home or get a job or overcome shyness or exit an abusive relationship or other realities of living a normal life. And I would suggest you label the emotions initiated by these challenges as discomfort rather than calling them anxiety. They are just the natural distress which comes with taking responsibility for the outcomes of your new life, just as everybody else has had to face throughout theirs. And the second element is subtle, but it's important. It's my advice that you practice ERP directly on tasks which change your life rather than focusing on your existing anxiety or OCD symptoms and fears. Let me try to give you an example. Rather than waiting until you overcome your social anxiety to apply for a job, why not apply for a job which will then force you to address your social anxiety? Plus you'll be hanging out with new people, learning new skills and earning money which will certainly move your life forward. Can you see that applying ERP to actions that will advance your life will always be faster and more sensible than focusing only on your existing symptoms? And know this, it's possible to retrain your unconscious brain. It's possible to handle any discomfort in your body. And it's possible to change the negative stories or the beliefs that you have about yourself. Yes, it will take a lot of work, but I'm here to tell you that it's absolutely worth that work. However, to apply ERP effectively 
I must teach you about the biggest ERP trap that most people unknowingly fall foul of. And that is, ERP is clearly divided into two categories, one which works well and the other which often worsens anxiety. So firstly, we have what I call positive ERP, whereby a person steps into their existing fears whilst they resist doing any avoidance or anxiety prevention routines. And this process, with repetition, retrains and normalizes their brain's hypersensitive and erroneous fearful responses. And it also encourages that person to accept bodily discomfort and supports them to implant a new, more positive story about that old fear in their heads. For example, the story, I must wash my hands in case they have germs on them, might become positively positively changed to, my natural immunity will keep me safe. And I think most people can accept that though hard, this is a very sensible path to follow, assuming that accepting discomfort rather than avoiding anxiety becomes that person's new primary intention. Now, the second type of ERP is referred to as negative ERP, where the person is constantly narrating negative stories to themselves about their existing fears and tries to avoid situations that trigger them or situations that require them to distract themselves with routines or compulsions because this process only reinforces their exaggerated and hypersensitive brain responses and their emotional overwhelms. Plus, the negative story that they have about themselves becomes reinforced too. For instance, if a person who fears flying continues to tell themselves that planes are scary, this will reinforce their phobia. And if they think they are foolish for not flying, This implies that they are a foolish person rather than a clever person just caught in a foolish anxiety loop. I hope you can see what I'm pointing to. ERP done negatively causes and reinforces anxiety and ERP done positively and repeatedly reverses that process. Both are ERP, but most people with anxiety and OCD can't see that they already do this negative ERP daily as it's their current normal way of thinking and behaving, though very destructive. It's like I detailed in video 43, where I discussed the power of placebo and how a positive thought or belief can positively affect the body regardless of, it, regardless of its truth and how a negative thought or belief can negatively affect the body regardless of that truth. And in that instance, we call it nocebo. One is good for you and the other is bad for you. Such is the power of a belief system on your body, irrespective of the truth of that belief. And even though science can prove this is true, anxious people still cling to negative beliefs, beliefs which cause their bodies to have negative responses, which tire them out and cause them to avoid anything that triggers those fears. This process must be reversed which is what positive ERP does. Or perhaps we should call it what it is, a simple and effective new placebo story. So step one of the calmness in mind process is to ditch the phrase ERP and switch to using the concept, am I consciously and optimistically placeboing my brain and body into new positive states? Or at least can you recognize I am unknowingly nocebo in my brain and body to remain in negative and fearful states. It's likely that you're already an ERP expert, but you unknowingly learned how to use it in the wrong direction, thus unknowingly reinforcing your anxiety rather than reversing it. Now, I'm sorry if this sounds too simplistic, but it's true. And I'm always surprised that traditional psychology overcomplicates the change process and overlooks the most powerful yet free attitudes of optimism and trust, which can be used to replace a person's old negative belief systems of pessimism and doubt. Or if we were to simplify it even further, we might say it's the ability to learn how to try new things 
whilst retraining the body to accept discomfort, then repeating those behaviors until the unconscious brain updates its old negative story to become a positive one. The process is simple. Just nobody taught you how to do this when you were young. And as an adult, you'll probably doubt that it will work, though it absolutely does, but only if you embrace it and repeatedly apply it. So let me introduce you to my DESIRE acronym, which will help you guide you towards more positive ERP actions. Now the D of DESIRE stands for DECISIONS. You must decide to follow the path of positive ERP or placebo and decide to stop doing negative ERP, which is just as effective, but in the wrong direction. And you must also become more decisive in your life. Your decisions must become orientated towards the intentions you have for your life, not your thoughts or feelings about your anxiety or your OCD. And remember, there's no right or wrong decisions because it's only after you have made a decision and then taken action on that decision will you know if it's effective. Plus remember, your past is not making your future. It is only what you do in this moment called now that will influence your future life experiences. Now the E of desire stands for exposure to a positive action. You must move towards challenging your fearful thoughts rather than arguing with them or believe in them. For example, if your thoughts want you to wash your hands, you move towards not washing them. If the thoughts say you might harm someone, you move closer to that person. If the thoughts say you can't touch, touch something, you move forward and you touch that object. If the thoughts say you can't apply for that job, you apply anyway. And this courageous rather than timid attitude, it's a game changer. And remember, Feeling vulnerable, yet still taking action, is the definition of courage, regardless of the outcome of any action that you may take. Now the S stands for sensing and surrender. You must consciously move your awareness from internal to external sensing, from what is happening within your body to what is happening outside of your body and in the environment around you. Who are you negatively affecting? What action in this moment will expand my life? Is my perceived inner fear actually happening in my outer reality? And you'll soon see that everything externally, it's okay. It's just what it is. It might not be what you like, but it is what it is. And remember, it's easier to adjust your internal perspectives with new stories or just by ignoring them than it is to control the external life. Then we begin to develop the courage to surrender that which is out of our control. We can learn to accept that people will do stupid things. Economies will fluctuate. People will pass away. Things will change. And this is how it's always been. And we don't need to fight it or do drama anymore. We can courageously surrender to what is. We can accept what is whilst we focus on the intentions that we have for our life. Now the I stands for ignore and invert. Ignore your unrequested unconscious thoughts and feelings. Then consciously invert the story in your head from doubt and pessimism to one of trust and optimism, even if it's not true. My hands don't need washing. Of course I can touch that door handle. Oh, I can love and hug that person. You can switch a negative story of health anxiety into a positive one of natural immunity, just as I discussed in video 49 parts one and two. Now the R stands for repetition and responsibility. Firstly, repetition of this new walk towards the fear behavior and optimistic thought processes over time, it does normalize them. And secondly, explore if you are taking responsibility for expanding your life, or are you trapped by your fear? Or have you taken too much responsibility for the lives of others around you? I think your focus for a while must be selfishly on what you need. 
And finally, the letter E in the acronym stands for enjoyment and energy. Ask yourself, what would you be doing if you weren't held back by your fears? Think of activities that would make your life more enjoyable and start doing them now, even if they're scary. Because taking action towards favorable experiences is the essence of positive ERP. Do you need to become more social? Do you need to go out more? Do you need to find some new hobbies? Do you need to find your voice? This is why so much of my course focuses on helping you to discover who you really are and what you really want from life, and then how to courageously step towards that life without your old need for reassurance or certainty. Then, how can you begin to think in terms of energy? As I discussed in video 37, can you change your conscious inner dialogue from low energy negativity and complaining to optimism, which is high energy and inspiring? Then begin the process of removing yourself from low energy people, places, and any self-destructive behaviors. This switch from low energy, doubtful inner dialogue to a high energy, optimistic one retrains the brain's reticular activating system, as I detailed in video 18. And this, with repetition, rewires your previously biased brain from seeing the world as a dangerous place to see in the world of one of hope and opportunity. Okay then, in the next few videos, I will give you examples of how to do this. But for now, I'd like you to rewatch videos 8, 17, 18, 37, 38, and 43, and begin to reframe ERP into the wonderful thing that it is, a conscious, positive, and optimistic placebo story that optimistically talks you into engaging with life rather than fearing it. And finally, I would advise you complete my decision-making document detailed in video 32 part two, as this will become the basis of your new positive ERP story. You decide what you want from life or who you wish to become and then you consciously and optimistically keep talking yourself towards those actions, regardless of what your programmed unconscious thoughts say or how your body feels. Okay, in my next video, I will give you examples of techniques and scripts enabling you to apply this uh, ERP effectively. And if you're not already signed up for my anxiety recovery course, it can be found at www.patreon.com forward slash the anxiety specialist where for a small monthly fee you can access over 50 videos which give you all the practical tools you need to find more calmness courage and confidence thanks a lot